Okay, welcome everybody to today's PMA Academy session that is presented by AdRev. Uh, today we're going to be discussing managing and licensing repertoire at scale uh, with Brett, Amanda, and Ben from the AdRev team. Thank you guys uh, very much and thank you to the AdRev team um, for your partnership and always being so supportive uh, and for your sponsorship of this PMA Academy session. We're really looking forward to it. Um, a couple of brief things before we begin. Um, Mark Awards nominations will be going live as soon as we wrap up the session today. Uh, so keep an eye on uh, your social media and your email inbox for that announcement. Uh, we'll be broadcasting the Mark Awards on Tuesday, October 6th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. All of that information will be coming out today as well. But keep an eye out for nominations and good luck to all of you. Um, thank you, as always, to our wonderful PMA Academy session sponsors, APM Music, the NMPA, Toomset, and AdRev, of course, um, who, of course, is presenting the session today. So with that being said, I will log off camera here, and I will turn it over to the AdRev team, and specifically Ben, to get us started today. Thank you, guys, and looking forward to it. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I want to say... We're very grateful to the PMA and the production music community at large for giving us, us, giving us this opportunity to meet with you all and tell you about some of the exciting things we're doing at AdRev to improve the process of managing licensing and repertoire at scale. For those of you whom I've yet to meet, my name is Ben Cannell. I'm our VP of Strategic Partnerships here at AdRev. Previously to coming on board, I held management and leadership positions at Rumblefish and CD Baby. CD Baby is actually where I got my start in music business many, many uh, revolutions around the sun ago. Uh, I think most of you know uh, us at AdRev, but in case you don't, I'll give you a bit about us. We uh, look after digital rights management and YouTube monetization for approximately 15 million assets comprised of sound recordings, compositions, and audiovisual content which in aggregate account for nearly 300 billion annual views online. We're one of the largest and most experienced of YouTube's administrative partners. And when it comes to managing rights in the digital environment and navigating the intersection of art, technology, and commerce, I can say without feeling too arrogant that we are truly subject matter experts. Um, we, uh, we, we pride ourselves on really uh, maintaining a few guiding principles. We, we, we want to maintain operational excellence, exercise superior administrative hygiene, and uh, most importantly, we want to find every dollar owed to our clients for the exploitation of their IP online. With those as our guiding principles, we, our sister companies and our partners, are developing and deploying new and really exciting at scale technology solutions uh, that, pr that really help us promote a healthy like licensing ecosystem. We've, recent we've recently purchased a company called Symbols out of Bordeaux, France. They're experts in signal processing and they're helping us do things like more effectively police fraud, enhance metadata, uh, and ultimately monetize uh, greater numbers of unauthorized exploitations of our clients' properties. So to tell you more about how we're using these new technologies um, to drive value and the best practices we're, we're uh, applying as well, we have here with us today, Amanda Baltazar, who is our Director of Operations and Brett Heatley, our VP of Systems. They're gonna oh, offer you this uh, and uh, without further ado, I'll pass it over to Amanda. Hi everyone, uh, I hope everyone's having a good morning. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about how we leverage tech to help drive revenue for our clients. But uh, first, I'll give a quick talk about like my beginnings at AdRev. Um, I started out as a content administrator, and that's where I learned the ins and outs of copyrights, licensing, the importance of metadata, and administration of like someone's copyrights. You know, there's this crazy stat that there's like 500 hours of YouTube video um, uploaded every minute. So 
you never know what's going to be like the next big TikTok or viral meme that's going to, you know, pop up on YouTube. So it was really easy for me to see how important it was for content creators and like rights holders to have their IP in the right hands, like at the right time. Um, with the huge amounts of content being uploaded online, rights holders and creators are just naturally subject to, you know, rights abuse. So being able to locate short um, uses as close to the initial upload date as possible is like very essential to thorough rights management. Um, as Ben mentioned earlier, Adrab has acquired a signal processing company from France earlier this year, and we are able to leverage their technology in a multitude of ways to drive uh, value for our clients. Uh, firstly, Symbol's uh, fingerprint algorithm, they provide us with high confidence potential results in our internal dashboard that our team can then review and then claim to help drive newfound revenue. Um, I wanted to also share a couple of like really awesome features about our dashboard um, where like our team is able to review uh, matches and, and all that great stuff. Um, our dashboard uh, automatically uh, prioritizes high potential revenue videos and being able to work so closely with symbols allows us to continuously adjust and make improvements in our operations. Um, our dashboard uses API calls to allow us to incorporate filters and features that a lot of people just, you know, they overlook. And um, so we're able to filter, you know, on an asset level. So, you know, if a specific song go vi goes viral on TikTok and then it gets re-uploaded to YouTube, you know, we're there. We can also filter on a channel level. That'll give us the ability to see a channel's um, repeated copyright infringements or even like license uses. Um, we can also filter by video upload date so we can grab newer videos with higher velocity viewership. Um, and in addition, we can also filter, you know, by match length and the number of the channel subscribers. And these features um, help our team work smarter and harder. So um, that's the amazing thing that I wanted to share. Um, but with Symbols, Adrev has been able to combine tech and like a human touch to the administration of our clients' copyrights. Um, on top of that, the team that we have is just well-versed in music and pop culture, so we can find even the most unlikely song uses. Um, and I'll just say, like, we watch our share of TikTok and meme compilation videos, so don't even worry about it. Um, I also wanted to say that I personally am just very inspired every day by the passion and the hard work of a lot of our team members and um they just really we all really care about protecting the value of creativity of our clients so um the combination of tech with uh caring human touch is something we're very very proud of um so now i'm going to throw it over to brett uh he's our vp of systems development at adref and he's really the architect of our systems and product he's been with adref since 2012 and he has a hands-on experience with every iteration of YouTube content ID system. And he's also an artist. So he has a very deep understanding of music licensing like in social media. So take it away, Brett. Thanks, Amanda, for that lovely introduction. Hi, Brett Heatley, Vice President of Systems at AdRev. Hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah, so lots to talk about here, um, but uh, particularly just wanted to cover the pre-qualifying uh, delivery process that we do and that we're constantly tinkering on. Uh, you know, there's a lot of problematic content that gets delivered to the internet. Um, with signal processing, what Symbols helps us provide or provides for us, we're able to nip a lot of that in the bud before it hits the system. Uh, you know, that, that kind of stuff that makes bad copyright claims and, and on a YouTube video, uh, you know, it, obviously is problematic. YouTube doesn't want that. We don't want that. No one wants that. So uh, processes prior to delivering them um, and, and being able to uh, put it through a car wash, so to speak, uh, filtration system um, helps us uh, keep a healthy ecosystem. Um, but the thing that, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys about today specifically was the licensing dashboard that we've been building and developing um, and continuing to tinker on. So I think most of you, if you license music, um, probably have some experience with the uh, basic fundamental problem with releasing, um, you know, 
approved uses of uh, the claims uh, related to approved uses. So, you know, you license the track to a high level client, everyone's excited, everyone thinks that the preemptive stuff has been done, um, they upload it, uh, there's a copyright claim, now they're confused and angry, they hit you up, you hit your administrator up, and something that you thought you solved a couple days ago, or even later, earlier than that, uh, becomes like a, you know, potentially a fire drill for like a number of different companies, and it's just a huge labor burn. So we want to do away with that, and we've built a system that can do that. So what it does is incorporates the uh, licensing information um, from our clients' uh, platforms, uh, documents that, and watches and waits for uses to be uh, utilized from that, those catalogs uh, on either channels or uh, people that have uh, license keys. Um, so at the point which uh, those uh, copyright claims are issued, uh, we do a series of confirmations and release those claims in a matter of minutes. So it's a proactive approach as opposed to a, uh, you know, a reactionary approach, uh, which I think has been needed for a long time. And I'm really proud that we are uh, facilitating that solution. You know, it's 2020 uh, and your catalog needs to remain competitive in an ever more streamlined space and unnecessary operational drag has to come to an end. Um, so, you know, the, the licensing dashboard can uh, service a multitude of licensing types. Um, whether you're, uh, you know, an outfit that sells single one-use uh, licenses uh, is, you know, contracted with a episodic where you're clearing the music copyrights for a, a series. Maybe it's the intro, perhaps, a theme song utilizes some of your music, um, you know, or a term. So, you know, like an annual term. So, uh, you know, from this time to next time this year, uh, this time next year. Uh, and then after that, it's it's not allowed, or a subscription, which more and more companies are uh, utilizing and looking to uh, implement. So uh, we have those basic uh, fundamental aspects of licensing covered. Um, one of the ones that I think is really cool is uh, a license key, right? Well, I don't think we're the first people to have come up with it, but we are delivering it and it's effective. So uh, we're able to, at the point of transaction, if we connect with your backend, uh, you you send us in licensing information. We store that licensing information and ship back to you an alphanumeric key that you can display to your clients. As long as that's provided somewhere in the description or the tags of a video, the metadata of the video, we can see that and clear that claim in a matter of minutes. So sometimes like that could be useful for like a video editor who doesn't necessarily know the end, uh, where the, exactly this, the, the, the video that he's helped uh, curate the music for, um, where it's going to land. And so, you know, being able to just utilize a key as opposed to having any specific social media information um, is definitely beneficial. Uh, so yeah, so not only does it release the claims, but it documents that stuff and it captures usage data. So um, that's really important and interesting because, you know, say you're on a, you're doing a subscription and you're, you're offering the entire catalog uh, to a multitude of people. Um, you, you may be tracking the downloads, but what you might not be tracking is how these songs are being used, which, you know, if you find out that, you know, one of your songs is being used in a very particular way, um, and it's popular in that way, or uh, you're noticing a lot of your songs are being used uh, from a certain genre that are used in a certain way, that could uh, help guide new business decisions, right? So knowing how your music is being used um, is incredibly useful, uh, particularly with people that are willing to pay money uh, to use your music. Um, some of you have probably heard of whitelisting. Um, it's, it's kind of been the uh, general uh, protection method in the YouTube sphere specifically. Um, that does okay, it's, it's okay, but it needs to be approved upon. Uh, approved upon. And uh, there are a few things that make this process better than that. Um, while listening is a little antiquated, a little unsophisticated, um, one of the things I was mentioning earlier is uh, sometimes you may ask for a whitelisted channel um, and that's done. But there could be administrative ownership conflicts within a system that you're operating in um, that can cause complications. And if not everyone's in the loop on who's allowed to use music and who isn't, 
um, you may find uh, that a copyright claim happens on something that you thought you did some preemptive work on. Uh, and that's why whitelisting is a little bit, it's not enough, right? So what our system differentiates from that is, yes, it makes a claim, but it's capturing that usage data, which you would not get. And secondly, it's able to do it in a matter of minutes, no matter what the administrative issues are that could be like in the YouTube ecosystem or other social media ecosystems. So it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's proactive. It's looking for issues and solving them, uh, again, within a few minutes. So we're all excited about that and being able to clear out our inbox with uh, emails that seem like they just belong in like the early 2010s and <laughs> do not belong in the 2020s. Uh, we're happy to be accommodating for that. Um, let's see here, got a few notes. Um, yeah, I mean, the implications of the future, uh, we're, constantly, we're constantly tick uh, tinkering away at this. Um, we have a few license types available already, but the future is going to be widespread and like the way in which music is utilized in social media and elsewhere. Um, it's just going to constantly iterate. And so, you know, we're excited because this is a very fundamental uh, construct um, that is directly implicated, like directly can be implemented to YouTube, but also um, as other social media websites open up, uh, we're also going to be able to um, deploy these fun this functionality to that, you know, and um, being able to scan, you know, right, against all of social media um, and be able to, you know, review uses and provide information around those. That's all coming. That's all in the future. So as a production music library, I would uh, submit to you to start thinking about things in um, really open possibilities. You know, um, the future is not set and, and the, the ways of the past, um, you know, are going to, uh, it's going to evolve. And so, start thinking creatively you know there's there's multi-channel networks that you can license with there's video game companies you can license with there's there's all sorts of things out here um, that need custom licensing solutions and need uh, administrators who have built apparatuses uh, to facilitate some of the turbulence that could maybe exists in some of these places so yeah I think that's I think that's all I had but um, you know we're really excited about this uh, technology um, you know the combination of having uh, you know an audio detection recognition across the internet plus customized licensing. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole new world here. So, um, you know, get creative and start thinking about ways to hustle your music. And with that, um, you know, uh, if Ben wants to close on anything, uh, and after that we can uh, have some questions, perhaps. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Brett. Um, so thank you all again for joining us today. I hope you've all learned uh, a little bit about some of the different ways we're working to uh, improve systems and, and drive value for our, our rights holders. Um, we really understand the value of technology here at AdRev and we lean into it hard, but we know that really uh, the key to, to lasting partnerships is, is really giving a high level service experience and proven results. So um, again, thank you. I think this is a good time maybe to open up the floor to questions if, if anybody has any. Cool, yeah. So um, I'm seeing there's a, there's a, there's a chat. Well, am I muted? Am I still muted? I can't tell. Yes, I'm, I'm audible. Um, okay, it looks like we got some questions here. Cool. Let's just run through some. Let's see. Looking for a question mark. <laughs> is there a video tutorial to show us how to use the new licensing dashboard? Um, yeah, sorry that we didn't have one, uh, you know, presented here, but yes, I've been doing those regularly. Um, happy to show you, you know, based on your licensing solutions, um, how you guys operate, uh, you might want to schedule a call and we can do one privately and we can talk about what you guys need and we can talk about even new features where we can, uh, you know, implement that makes more sense to how you sell. So uh, happy to set up any of those, um, you know, after this call uh, with any of you and uh, schedule this week or next week. Um, next question. Oh, lost myself. This uh, touchpad's too sensitive. Uh, how does the key system prevent third party claims? For example, from PROs now that uh, when they can claim for the composition, will the end users still be impacted by those claims using AdRef? So, um, if another administrator where we have no relationship to that, um, 
right. We can only we can only facilitate solutions for things that we administer for. Um, but that said, uh, this is a very poignant question um, about the PROs who are kind of over the last like 18 months or so kind of really been more not aggressive but more assertive in their ability to take administrative ownership on the performance side of compositions. Fortunately, with the production music industry, you guys represent the compositions. And so with at least with AdRev, we're representing both sides of that. And so when I was mentioning earlier about administrative uh, conflicts, um, beyond just the conflicts, sometimes there's just joint ownership of materials. This prevents those claims from staying on. So a PRO may be a little bit more proactive in the system, may be claiming on the behalf of some kind of sync use, which is, there's some systematic problems there, and we're discussing that with the, the powers that be um, to, to remedy that. But in the interim, this solution will locate claims from either the sound recording side or the composition side. And if a PRO affiliated with one of your compositions places a claim without your consent, this program is monitoring both sides of that. And if it sees that clip, it'll release it. So um, that's what's cool about it, right? So you could uh, like whitelist in a channel um, and not known that a PRO is going above and beyond. They don't have the same licensing database that we do. So they're just claiming a video, right? So um, having something as a solution to that, uh, this does prevent those issues from being big. And um, again, these things are getting cleared in a matter of minutes. So a great question um, from Nick. I appreciate that. Again, with the sensitive touchpad. <laughs> Overly uh, scrolling down here. Did any of this really end? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the same thing. Okay, got it. Um, right, there's a uh, question Jones, about the, the prominence ahead. of upload here. Um, can you tell us why we can't see which country the YouTube clip was uploaded from? That is something that was another great question. Uh, that's another thing. That's a, that's a piece of information that YouTube deprecated. So I think like middle 2010s, that was available information, but they've, you know, I don't know what the legal reasons and implications there were, but they decided that it was best to um, not present that information. You can kind of e extract some information around where the upload is from, um, you know, and we can build tools technically, like if we wanted to, to kind of like help um, ascertain that information. I mean, if, if something's in German, right, like you can assume that, or to some degree, it might be from Germany, right? Um, but that's, that you can get intelligent with that a little bit, but you can't necessarily, um, you can't capture that data anymore, unfortunately. So is there another one? Let's go. Uh, can you speak a little to how that license key is protected from others seeing the key without authorization? Um, no, it's so, so we've actually kept it open, um, you know, when it comes to license keys, because some people have, you know, some people want to say, okay, you can only protect one channel, or, or you only want to protect this amount of things. Um, if you let us know that, we can customize these things so that, and just, uh, just a couple little iterations where we could dial in on that and, um, and make sure that the key is only clearable in, uh, for certain things, for certain restrictions. We can, we, we can re restrict the key in any ways that you want. So it's just a matter of having a discussion and how you want to utilize that. Um, and, uh, and, and all the usage data is gonna be reported. So if you wanted to know if a license key was being used outside of the way that you want it to be used, then you could just have a look. All right, here's the key, here's all the corresponding things, right? And then um, saying, wait, no, th this does not comply. We need to let them know and we need to reinstate some claim right out in the ether. So um, it's, it's open, but it's customizable. So we can, we can address any type of how you want to facilitate a license key in whatever way you want. So um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. But let's talk. Um, uh, can you tell, oh yeah, the country one. Recently uploaded a uh, My Composer Showreel to my YouTube channel, and one of the pieces was placed with a library on a non-exclusive basis. Their metadata showed up there. What are the implications of this? Um, so a copyright claim was made on behalf of some administrator who represents some portion of your library in a non-exclusive manner. They delivered that to the system. Um, you know, if administrators representing content in the YouTube sphere, they're supposed to have 
administrative rights to facilitate copyright administration for that system. So um, it's possible that it's not necessarily a nefarious claim if they have permissions to do that. Um, but, um, you know, if you want that claim address and then you can file a dispute, you can locate the administrator, you can contact them, reach out to them. Uh, there's nothing bad that happens if you get a copyright claim. A lot of people conflate copyright claims with copyright takedowns, in which case that is, there's a significant difference in a copyright takedown. Um, if you get three of those, you're subject to a review, which could lead to the take, the removal of your channel from YouTube. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it, every every copyright claim without having to see it in front of me and looking into it, investigating it, it it's kind of difficult to tell exactly what the story is for that one. But I mean, filing a dispute and um, kind of tracking down the administrator and talking to who delivered that content and requesting that they either take it down or monetize all of your content on their behalf, um, uh, you know, through your behalf, uh, through them on your behalf, uh, it can be done, you know. So, you know, it's a general copyright question. It, it happens a lot. A lot of people will be an artist, they upload content, um, they, uh, some administrator makes a claim, they figure it out. It's a general case, it happens a lot. Uh, but just, you know, just kind of track it down. And if you need help, uh, we're happy to facilitate some help for you. So just reach out to us and uh, we can help manage your catalog or um, just help you find the answers to your questions specifically. Um, client of Dashco, uh, my, um, the catalog have this service now. Um, does Dashco have this service now? Dashco is an affiliated company, such a company of ours. Um, we work with them closely on a lot of things. Um, you know, not, not currently, uh, but um, that's certainly something we could definitely implement. Uh, we could have a conversation with them about that. Um, you know, but generally, you know, they're in distribution, but I, I'm not, I, it's possible. You know, we could have that conversation. Uh, give them a shout out and uh, maybe we can talk with Ben Patterson over there and see if we can work something out. I'm confident we can. Um, okay. Uh, answer. Oh, you're welcome. Um, this is a question. If Michael says, if you are going to take out a music single with platforms like TuneCore, DistroKid, or other distribution music platform, do you have to use this licensing dashboard after you submit the song or only if you share the music in social media and YouTube? Um, digesting that. <laughs> um, so if you're distributing to other platforms, other administrators that work in the YouTube sphere, um, you know, if, if we don't have administrative rights to control that music in the system and release claims and reinstate claims and do manual claims as Amanda's team does, uh, you know, finding value for you guys, we need ownership of, we need administrative rights, not ownership. We need administrative rights of the content in order to facilitate the wide array of services that we provide. You know, so, if a copyright claim or a situation is happening with another administrator, that's something out of our control. Um, so just making sure I got your question right. Sorry. Uh, you have to use this licensing dashboard after you submit the song. Um, so I would say we could work with, you know, technically it's, it's possible. We could work with a number of different administrators that if they want to utilize this type of technology, I mean, we can have a conversation with them or we can connect with them and we could facilitate this for their catalogs if we want to if we if that seemed you know if that made sense to do that we could do that um, but again currently we can only um, facilitate administrative um, actions against stuff that we represent so you know that's it that's I think that's where we have to leave that one there's another question having fun with these thanks guys uh, thank you guys for asking all these questions Will the full video be viewable after the Zoom concludes? Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, and, and Morgan said, yes, it will be available on the PMA YouTube. So, gotcha. Hair's going crazy. All right, well, you know, if, unless there's another question, happy to keep going. Can you dive a little bit more, and hi, I'm back. Uh, can you dive a little bit more into how this, how your new technologies and these new services that you guys are creating there, ties into um, maybe a long-term, your long-term partnerships, your long-term goals, um, long-term kind of roadmap from an ad rev perspective as far as tech, you know, obviously the emergence of more and more technology and streaming services and, you know, can you just speak to a, the larger picture of um, 
what that looks like for you guys and why these services are really important in this day and age. Uh, sure. I mean, I'm happy to keep going. So, um, yeah, I mean, so we want to, we want to capture all the usages on the internet. Straight and simple. And depending on what kind of social media apparatus has developed a place for people to view content, uh, you know, there's going to be some bugs, there's going to be some hitches in how their systems work. And we are going to consistently and continuously address where there's rub, right? And, and we're going to gel that. We're going to figure out a way to facilitate a smoother process. Um, we basically really just connecting the music to the internet in a, you know, with licensing and, um, and just facilitating as many solutions as possible. It's a lot of fun. I'm a YouTuber. I make music. I make video game pop music and I, you know, let the YouTubers uh, use it and stuff. And um, it's been, a, I'm, I'm, we're engaged. You know, we have a lot of artists in our, in our team. We have a lot of people hitting up the TikTok, you know, as Amanda was pointing out. Um, and there's, there's new social media sites like every other year, if not more than that. So um, the revenue opportunities are endless. This is, it's going to, it's going to perpetually evolve. And so you want to get your fundamental structures in now that can express themselves and connect themselves with whatever social media apparatus shows up in the future, you know? So we're very future oriented in that way. And, and setting up this licensing database is exciting because it is a fundamental cog in the wheel, in the wheel of viewing, you know, uh, content online. So, um, and there, you know, and it's been something that the whole community, not just, uh, you know, not of course on the licensing side, you want to facilitate a good, situation but you know just as a content creator this is super frustrating stuff uh you know when you when you've done all the diligence to uh you know uh, either be on the right subscription or what have you and that only to find then your monetization is disrupted i mean millennials and all the younger kids they're all content creators it's how they make probably a lot of their income some people it's their whole careers by the time they're like 18 they're already like a famous youtuber and so this is their real income, and uh, that's not going anywhere. The internet is not going anywhere. It's only going to grow. It's only going to become more relevant than it has. I mean, anybody who's seen, like, how YouTube's evolved from, like, 2008 to now, I mean, we used to make fun of, like, we kind of, you know, for a while, the internet, there was even, like, articles back in the 90s, people talking about the internet were like, yeah, it's a fad. It's not going to be any big deal, and, like, everything's going to be in TV. Like, we, we got our, we have our plan, and it's going to be good, but you know, look what happens, right? It, it's taken over everything. I mean, if you're Nike, right, and you, you, uh, you create an ad campaign, you're uploading it to your YouTube channel, right? So, like, everybody that used to be in, like, you know, um, television and broadcast, they're bringing all of their materials to the YouTube space. And, um, you know, it's, it, they're just, it's just gonna, it's just gonna continue to grow and evolve, and we're gonna be there to build more tech and solutions where, um, you know, either there's a lack of understanding or the social media platform is built too much by engineers and not understanding the music space. Um, you know, so we, we have a bit of both. We have a nice uh, chemistry at our company of artists, YouTubers, um, streamers, and, you know, technical solution-oriented players. So um, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm really excited and really pumped about where AdRev's going and companies like us that there's a branching out that's happening. You know, it, it was like, it was very basic and um, simplistic, but streamlined, you know, to a degree, like the type of administration that we can do. But there's so much more now that we're real, now that we got our, our, our roots are deep and, uh, you know, we've been well watered and well soiled and all that, uh, this tree is, is branching. And there's, there's going to be more and more to do, um, you, you know, the world of remixing, the world of getting authorization from one creator to the next. Um, all these things are going to be able to provide a thicker layer of cream to the internet. And without technical solutions that can help streamline that, where social media apparatuses may not have it all figured out yet, but you have, a, but you have companies like ours who get it, uh, you know, we can create solutions that, for things that yet haven't even existed yet. So there, there's a lot, you know, still under the rock, you know, and, or, or rather, um, you know, a lot still to do. So it's a cool time. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and to jump in here, just um, to, to tell you a little bit more about how we're using symbols, uh, in addition to, to using it to find um, greater numbers of, of, uh, of claims, we're also, we're also using it for large-scale uh, rights holders to do some pre-delivery diligence. 
right? So the symbol system can uh, help detect fraud. It can prevent duplicate uh, content and otherwise problematic content from being delivered into ecosystems where it shouldn't. Uh, specifically YouTube, the, 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 there's increasing stringency in terms of compliance uh, requirements there and Symbols helps us uh, really eliminate some of that friction that, that problematic content causes. Also, uh, it can be used to enhance metadata programmatically and um, uh, we're, we're doing that with a number of partners. We also use it to vet catalogs that are non-exclusive. So for instance, if a, if a large licensor comes to us and wants to know what can be affected via our, our license key apparatus, we can do a pre-qualifying scan and tell what among that repertoire is already represented by, by AdRev and what they may need to go out and acquire the rights for to be able to, uh, to utilize um, programmatic license clearance. Yep. So uh, there's another question here I found. Uh, how can, Amanda, maybe you wanna jump in and take this one. Since your technology is able to scour websites, have you ever thought about adding a new service for music creators to help identify usages? Sort of like TuneSat, BMAP. Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely, you know, we're a lot on YouTube right now. That's where it's one of like the top social media platforms and streaming services out there. And, you know, we'll be ready when Facebook and Twitter and Instagram are ready to have a more sophisticated system to help, you know, keep all the rights in check. We'll be ready for it. We have the tech and, you know, once the capability has been added, we're here, we're ready, so. And, and to that end, you know, we're able to scan other social media sites. So <laughs> come talk to us, um, you know, after this uh, and in whatever it is that you want done, we can get squared away. And as far as building like a technological service around that, yeah, that's, that's on the way for sure. So we'll be able to report against others, like all social media. Yeah. So all of, all of the technology we're building and, and uh, deploying now is extensible. It's platform agnostic. So as soon as uh, the other platforms open up, and give us some incentive to participate and we can extract value from those platforms, we're ready to, to apply these technologies um, there and, and you know, in, in, into future iterations of social video. On that point, someone asked, or two people asked actually, any update regarding music monetization on Facebook? So if you guys can status update us on uh, Facebook and any other platforms that are significant that would be helpful yeah do you want that one ben you take it brett oh okay, yeah i know i mean it's it, really not too much to say i mean they're in the process of it they had something they're working on for a long time um and uh you know it's it's still not where it needs to be for like administrators to come in and like very proactively engage with the uses i mean we can scan and locate uses but as far as like a content management system akin to the YouTube space, it's it's not it's not available and functional in that way just yet. So uh, still hang tight on that one, um, but uh, you know I, I'm I'm confident uh, that they will uh, get that going uh, sometime in the next uh, few years. I'm hopeful at least. So we'll, we'll we can follow up further on that though. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's somewhat re that's pretty recent um, status update, unfortunately. Um, Margaret asks, is there ever a situation where we as a copyright owner can receive income through ad rev if there is no advertising revenue attached to the spot? For example, we own both footage and music, but often the footage will be ripped and posted without the original music synced to it. In the case is in this cases are only option to issue a takedown or can you force monetization anywhere other than YouTube? Uh, yeah, I was just still in that, sorry. <laughs> Good question. Um, well, if you own the audio and the visual, um, we can, you know, we can detect, uh, you know, there, there's visual um, technology uh, available to us um, the, where we can locate an, a, a visual component, um, you know, if, if you own both sides, uh, that we can locate that and copyright claim against that. 
Um, if they place that on YouTube, of course, we can do that. We can issue takedowns against other social media apparatuses um, in those instances. Um, you know, that's something that we want to move into, right? So we're starting with audio detection. We're going to obviously move into audio visual. There are, we already have capabilities with visual detection, but um, we want to expand that, of course. Um, you know, if there, I was trying to, to the original part of that question. I mean, also, you know, another thing is uh, just reporting, you know, even against um, social media platforms that, you know, don't have an active and robust content ID system like YouTube, you know, uh, the conversations with the PROs around reporting usages, you know, um, you know, is, is something that we're looking at um, and helping facilitate that, you know, as like, you know, possible double check and um, just locating additional uses that the copyright system may not have detected. Um, so there's, so even if there's not a, uh, you know, direct advertisement revenue related to a use, um, reporting against that use, of course, is going to have, you know, um, bringing that to the PROs is going to be uh, another value add uh, that audio detection across the internet is going to provide, you know, holding accountable those that, you know, owe you money. <laughs> Yeah, the short short answer to that is we can we can also assert ownership on audiovisual content as well. Yes. So yes. as long as we have that reference material delivered into the system, we can affect it via the same levers we would with music. Um, Michael asked, "Is there any downside to other YouTubers uploading my music in terms of monetization?" No, in fact, it creates a multiplier for you. So uh, really, that's what you would like to see happen uh, as many, many, many people using your music um, outside of authorization uh, and only doing it for social currency rather than actual currency so that you can claim it for yourself and get the value of that multiplier. Definitely. Yeah, there is a lot of benefits to, you know, um, people using your music of, of the, the popularization of this stuff. If it's used in the right, if you got a funny song, you got a quirky song, you got a dramatic song, a horror song, this little sting, any of those types of things that catches, uh, you could get a crazy wave in revenue. We've seen this time and time again, man, this team locating um, a production queue that just got used in the right place at the right time. And is like, okay, that's perfect. There's a whole like genre of footage that people are then, then gonna chop up and comp, make compilations against, you know, uh, gaff footage, gaff compilations, uh, you know, anything you can think of, ghost compilations, people getting scared, right? If you, if you can capture and hit it on the head with one of these uh, pieces and um, everyone likes it and then the, the main YouTube channels that constantly posting this content, get wind of it and utilize it, you crazy, crazy amounts of revenue, like drastic, <laughs> huge spikes. And kind of like forever because it becomes a part of like meme culture, um, which, you know, constantly does like these kind of callbacks to like previous memes. And it just kind of, it kind of just is a part of the ether at that point. So getting your content in front of people and allowing, you know, um, and uh, letting the uses go up, but monetizing them, of course, um, it's going to get you a lot of revenue, a lot of opportunity there. So get it in front of as many people as possible. Here's a question from Mike. Does a user of AdRev have access to insights generated from ad reports placed in their content monitored by AdRev? If so, what aspects are available to the end user? Um, we break down our advertisement reports into premium and standard advertising, um, but the, the details as to like which ad, if, if I think if, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question, but um, the specifics on the ads, um, you know, it's not too, uh, we don't get all of that information. There's different types of ads in which generate revenue, and some of that information is available, but, um, you know, currently not all of that is reported. Um, it, it's kind of, it's something that to consider, actually, you know, um, to understand exactly which ads are running and what types of ads. Um, but a lot of that information isn't accessible, um, and, uh, but we break it down into the different types of revenue that you can get on YouTube, so like the premium revenue from people running a subscription model, like paying so they don't see ads, right? Or, and then the people that, you know, see ads and they generate it through um, ad interaction, right? So that, those are the two types of ad formats that we're kind of, or the revenue formats that we're sharing currently in our accounting. But it is interesting and worth investigating further, you know, where, um, you know, how uh, 
what advertisements and, and, and what specifically uh, generated that revenue for you. So we'll bring that up with a uh, county, bring that up with our, with our team. Yeah, he followed up and said, is any aspect of information available beyond what the user's share of paid ad revenue is? Visibility beyond. Is any aspect of information available beyond what the user's share of paid? Um, I'm, I apologize. I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. Okay. Um, is there anything? Be Go ahead. Mike, if you want to, I'm, I'm so, Mike, do you want to uh, reformat the question maybe so we can get you the answer? Um, if we haven't asked it correctly or answered it correctly, we want to get you that information. So yeah, help sorry, us thanks. understand. <laughs> um, we'll move quickly to what is the royalty called that is generated by YouTube and then collected by AdRev? Is it the so-called streaming mechanical, uh, audiovisual, or is it on the master label side? The revenue is ad revenue, advertisement revenue generated against the content, you know, the, the video displayed. Uh, you know, it's not, not it's not a royalty. Um, it's it's literally ad revenue, like you know. Um, from people interacting with the ads, clicking on the display ads, the pre-rolls, watching them through, not clicking the skip button, um, you know, and, you know, uh, advertisers pay to, to put their ads on in front of the videos and around the videos. And so a, a portion of revenue generated from that is allotted to the assets that are embedded within that content and thus paid out as advertisement revenue. So that's the type of revenue it is. Are there any plans to start tracking trends in views for videos that are ad rev content? Sorry. Are there any plans to start tracking trends in views for videos that have ad rev content usage attached to it? We have noticed that in video game live stream placements that having alerts to when a stream starts trending, it would be useful in other verticals. When okay. the views start trending upwards, it is helpful to start sharing those videos out to other social platforms. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is about, we do that kind of indirectly um, based on how we tee up our process that Amanda leads. Um, so we prioritize, when it comes to things that are trending, we're kind of looking at everything and we tee it up in a priority set. So like the most, the biggest, you know, videos of the day are getting shown to us and we're taking action against those. So we're catching trends. Um, you know, because we're, we're capturing all the uses and then we're seeing which ones are the, have the highest volatility, right? And interacting with those first, making that a priority. So, you know, the, the way that it's structured is that it is in like innately cap capturing trending um, items, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, to add to that, uh, Amanda and her really great team, they're so plugged into culture. So they really get to know the chemistry of a given catalog and then those cultural environments where it's most likely to be shared. So they're sort of intuitive um, when it comes to managing trends and, and virality and, and things of that nature. So we really, really get, get pretty intimate with the content and, and learn where it's going to be promulgated. Um, what else? Really quick, maybe. Can we talk about, um, are there differences in managing, let's say, an individual's um, catalog versus a production music library? What those differences are? How are they handled? Um, is it possible for individual composers to work with you guys directly? Things of that nature to kind of just differentiate between the two parties? Yeah, we work with individuals and labels and libraries. We work with pretty much everyone under the sun. You know, we, we have a specialty in production music because we understand the licensing world. Um, but, our, you know, we have, we, have we have tons of that. Yeah, we have a lot of unique artists that uh, facilitate and manage their own rights. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, we, sometimes a, uh, an individual artist may deliver something that was delivered to us by a production music library. And there might be some confusion as to who has the rights to monetize that directly, whether or not the, the production music library is you know, permitted to do so. Um, and we just kind of work those out as they come up. And uh, once those things are resolved, then the appropriate rights holder will, will manage it on behalf of them. And then they're, you know, if they need to pay it off to somebody else, they can do so. But um, yeah, we're, no, we're, uh, you know, there's some like royalty free artists out there that they don't, they do non-exclusive licensing, but they, we rep their stuff directly, right? Because we have the 
an agreement that says, okay, you can, you can sell what you want, but as far as YouTube monetization and management, that's with us, right? So um, we're, we're able to work with pretty much anybody on the sun. And because of the licensing database that we're building and the licensing experience that we have, of course, we can work with production music uh, libraries and uh, anyone who licenses content and, and manage that for them. Awesome. So we have uh, Mike, some clarification from Mike. So as an end user of AdRev, will I have insights beyond the amount being paid out by AdRev? So essentially, what are you providing your clients or people that you're working with with data, with insights? Yeah, usage data, you know, you can say everything that, everything that is being uh, generated revenue against, um, we're, we provide a line item. It's broken down by every single video that you made money on. So you can find, and, and a little bit of stats on the video, there's a little jump off links. You can see exactly what's going on um, or how it was used, uh, you know. So yeah, I mean, and you can also see uh, information around, you know, if you have an amendment with us to do the mango claiming stuff, you can see specifically which claims, what revenue came to you by us um, through our additional methods, right? And so you can see exactly like, okay, YouTube caught this amount of, um, videos with your content what did adrev on top of that catch you know and then you can you can break it up by that and say oh okay well look like they just made us like a couple extra grand you know <laughs> or whatever um based off stuff that youtube didn't even find so um you know stuff like that uh, da data related to the earnings that you got as far as the channels and the videos that embedded your content that stuff you have access to you have stats on the video, on the video views, um, and a bunch of jump off links to investigate further if you want. And he says, just to clarify, you cannot see which ads are being played or the demographic of user interacting with the ad. Not yet displayed in our earnings reports, but some of that analytics can be presentable. And uh, you know, that's something that we are gearing up to do. Um, we, yeah, we're doing, a, we're doing a lot of really cool innovation stuff right now. Um, even far beyond this. And a lot of it has to do with like dialed in reporting, um, getting very specific with analytics. And um, there's gonna be a lot, a lot come down the road. But if there's something you specifically want to see, something that specifically interests you, reach out to us, talk to us about it, and we'll make sure that when we roll out some new analytics features that that is accommodated for. Awesome. Um, what about timeline? Timeline on new services that you guys are offering. When can people start contacting you now? When will they go into effect? When all of those things. Can we talk through a timeline and uh, maybe best ways to get in contact with you guys if they are interested in, in pursuing or partnering? Yeah, so we're, we're introducing um, clients to this every week. Uh, we're kind of doing like a little bit of a soft launch with it. I guess now we're kind of like declaring it to a degree we might do something more um later but um it's available now it's functional now it's fully functional now um and uh we're we're, we're ready to take on uh clients uh, for this purpose yeah automated licensing uh clearance has already been launched we've we've got uh several clients already uh using the service we can also provide the deduplication services anti-fraud services metadata enhancements and um, and of course our core services uh, right now. So uh, we're working with several large scale clients, um, and uh, it's it's been going very very well. So if anybody wants to to contact us about any of the, the these services, please uh, hit Brett or I up anytime. Um, I'm Ben Cannell at AdRev .net and uh, happy to talk you through it. We can give you a demo. Um, Anytime you like. Yeah. Okay. We had one person ask how much the service costs and what the agreement's like, but Ozzy, I think you'll take that offline. Um, connect with Brett or Ben, and they are happy to get you that information and see if they can help you for sure. Um, and I've just posted both of your guys' email addresses into the chat. So I am offering them up to all of you guys. Oh, great. Well, uh, if you have lot. any questions, uh, follow up, um, feel free you know, to reach out to me as well. I'm happy to facilitate anything um, as necessary. Um, any last thoughts, closing words from the AdRev team? 
just a great big thank you to everyone uh, and just know that uh, we're so grateful to, to have this community uh, be part of the AdRev uh, team uh, or be connected with AdRev. And uh, we, we'd, we'd love to talk to you about the new services if you're interested. If you have any needs, please uh, don't be shy about hitting us up and asking questions. Yeah, we're excited. A lot of things in the works. Um, like I said, we're branching out. Um, and a lot of promise, a lot of promising endeavors that we're working on right now. I'm, 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 I've been working here since 2012, and I've never been more pumped about where we're headed. So let's talk. Let's talk about custom solutions. Let's make some new con. Let's make some new tools and features that make sense for your company. Yeah, and I think to what Brett said earlier, um, you know, well, as you guys reach out to them for for thoughts on on how they can help you in your business, don't uh, don't hesitate to tell them, like they said, about services you would like to see or a tech you would like to see. I think, you know, the AdRev team has been very um, open armed in regards to uh, suggestions and feedback from our community. So again, if, if there's anything that you guys have suggestions on, you can send those to me we can, you know, correlate them and get them over to, to the AdRev team. But, you know, in partnership, right, let's, let's work together to do our best uh, in the digital era and, and, you know, collect as much as we can. Awesome. So. Thank you so much, Morgan. Cool. Appreciate all right. It. Well, thank you guys uh, all for joining us. Um, as a reminder, this will be available for a watch back on our YouTube channel. Um, thank you to our, our sponsors, uh, AdRev, of course, for presenting this. And then our PMA Academy session sponsors, APM Music, the NMPA, and TuneSet, and AdRev, of course. Um, we will see you in two weeks for a, a panel that we will be announcing here shortly. And keep an eye out for our Mark Awards nominations to be announced in just a few minutes. Um, all right. Thank you, guys. We will see you later.